What's going on everyone? Austin John Please here and today quite easily the most request guide from you guys is a puffin guide to get your traits up at Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. <laughs> I've been sick for the last five days and I've spent pretty much all that time doing just battle tower stuff and figuring out Poffins. And I figured out Poffins and I'm almost done figuring out the battle tower. In this video I'm going to be going over everything you need to know for Poffin making. Broken down to six sections. One, stat spread. Two, berry acquisition. Three, berry traits. Four, cooking basics. Five, cooking explained. And six, recipes for the best Poffins. I'm still a little under the weather so my voice isn't there but I'm gonna carry you through this. First, let's talk about a Pokemon stats spread. On its summary page, you're going to be seeing this little breakdown that includes five different sections. Coolness, beauty, cuteness, cleverness, and toughness. Every Pokemon is allowed to eat Poffins to increase its traits. Each of these five values has this little triangle meter that goes from 0 to 255. And then below that, you're going to be seeing Sheen. Sheen is the total amount of Poffins that a Pokemon is allowed to eat before it stops affecting its stats. It too is 0 to 255. And there's 12 little stars that appear at the bottom and each one of those stars is about 12 and a half points towards the total amount It should be also noted that Sheen is permanent So you have a finite amount of Poffins that you could feed to a Pokemon to increase its stats That's it. Do know that if a Pokemon Sheen is at 254 You can overfeed it to overfeed the 255 the Poffin does the same effect and then it just caps out 255 Now below this you're gonna see a Pokemon's favorite food my Inferno Ape here likes dry food. This is directly affected by the Pokemon's born with slash caught with slash natural nature. Nature that affects a Pokemon's boosted trait and deducted trait define its liked and disliked foods. So the effectiveness of a food that it does enjoy is boosted by 10% and a food that it dislikes is reduced by 10%. What that means is a Pokemon who's adamant has boosted attack and decreased special attack and therefore they like spicy food and dislike dry food. So a spicy Poffin will be 110% effective and a dry one will be 90% effective. What I'm going to walk you through is going to ignore all that, so you'll be fine. Likewise, if they have a neutral nature, Nature, they're going to be neutral to all the Poffins as well. There's a total of 65 berries that are in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl and you get them through six different means. One, they grow on trees. You've probably come across them. They're pretty common. Two, following Pokemon in the overworld will sometimes gift you one. By the way, there are three different groups of berries that are locked to Pokemon of certain natures. And they're natural natures, not, you know, affected by mints. And I'm going to talk more on this later. Three, following cute Pokemon in Amity Square after a certain amount of steps they may be holding a rare berry for you four in pastoria city at the bottom left there's a woman who's going to give you one out of 18 random berries a day the berries that this woman gives you overlap with the berries that you could get from the following overworld pokemon five berries that are dropped after catching the gen 3 legendary pokemon in romanus park so I hope you didn't use those already. Actually, I'm not even going to be using those in my calculations. And six, you could buy them from the Berry Master on Route 208, although his aren't really useful for Poffins, so I don't care about him. Cool. Some berries are sometimes gifts from NPCs and other various means, and all of the berries in the game take a full 24, 48, or 72 hours to grow with supposedly water speeds it up. I haven't actually seen anything about that. I've only literally seen you need to plant the berry and then water it. That's all I've seen. So maybe it's required for it to grow in this game. Honestly, I'm not 100% too sure. I'm not teaching you how to grow berries here. Next, we're gonna be talking about berries and their traits or their tags. So, this lump of berry right here, right? Every berry has traits that pertain to how you cook them into poffins. They have between one to four of the five different flavor traits. A smoothness, and they also have a firmness, although that's not really applicable to this. But something that's really important to know about this, and this is one of the three important things I hope you take away from this video. The five different flavor traits that each berry has affect the other five flavor traits. What I mean by that is spicy is weakened by dry, sour is weakened by spicy, bitter is weakened by sour, sweet is weakened by bitter, and dry is weakened by sweet. If you look at this chart, it goes in a giant counterclockwise circle, so that's an easy way to remember it. Now if we look at the leopard berry, it has 10 points in each of the five flavor traits except for dry. Now, take into consideration that spicy is going to cancel out the sour, the sour gets cancelled out by the bitter, the bitter cancels out the sweet, 
and the sweet makes the dry a negative value. That essentially means that this is a spicy berry with spicy plus 10 and dry minus 10 with the smoothness of 20. Honestly, I'm not really too sure where it tells you the smoothness in game. There's just like an internal number for them and I know all the internal numbers and I'm gonna tell you all them later. So I like to think of this as a 50% spicy to smooth ratio and a minus 50% dry to smooth ratio. And I'm gonna be going over why those ratios are important later. All right, now it's time to cook. Let's talk about the three places that you can cook. One is in Heart Home City. Two is Amity Square in Heart Home City. And third is in a future update, which I like to call uh, the Mass Online update, which is supposedly update version 1.2, in the Union Room with other players. At time of recording, we're only on version 1.1.2, and we do not have the online berry functionality. <coughs> Powering through it for you guys. <clears throat> okay. Hard Home City provides no boosts whatsoever that I can find. You should never ever cook there. The Union Room update is it out yet at time of recording, and the Amity Square Poffin cooking can give you a huge bonus. More on this in a little bit. So just a little thing. If you didn't realize, there are three phases to cooking here. Each of them is gonna be denoted by the color of the bowl on the outside and the lights around it. And it's your job to make sure that you spin this fast enough, that way it doesn't burn, and slow enough that it doesn't overspill. Overspilling would be if it goes down over like that. And there's gonna be a very faint little kind of white edge right at the and outside of like a darker area on the inside post editing Austin, zoom in on that. This is gonna be a really bad poffin. At random times, the pot is gonna to need to be stirred in the opposite direction. As far as I could tell, that really doesn't make too much of a difference. But when it gives you that icon to spin, you wanna go really, really, really fast. And then, once you're at that high enough level, you want to f taper off and find your perfect speed, right? During phase two, the requirement for how fast you have to spin changes a little bit, and it just kind of comes with feel. You'll figure it out. And now the second major point that I want you to take away from this video, if nothing else. At phase three, when the mixture is thickened and the outside lights turn purple, you can spin fast violently fast, as fast as you possibly can. Treat it like you're playing Mario Party on the N64. You cannot overflow the mixture at this point because it's already thickened. And now's your chance to get your time cut down. When you're done, you're gonna be getting between one to four poffins, depending on how many berries you put in. And the name is either going to have the name of the most predominant trait. In this case, it's a spicy poffin. However, if it's above level 50, it's going to be called a mild poffin. And then at level 100, uh, it's called something else. I don't have it handy. Honestly, you should not be making level 100 poffins. On the screen, you will see the results of how many times it overflowed and how many times it burned. Now, I would like to go over the math on how to make good poffins. Poffins that you make are determined on many different things, and it's a little complicated, so I'm gonna try to simplify it as much as I can thanks to Microsoft Excel, or specifically Google Sheets. First things first, never cook two of the same poffin. You're gonna get a foul poffin, it's gonna be bad. That's like saying, hey, I wanna make this meal. I'm gonna add some corn on the cob and some corn on the cob, and then your meal is not good. It's just corn on the cob. It's pretty foul. Next, always cook with four poffins because you're going to get the most benefit from doing it that way. So in summary, you just need to cook four poffins of complementing flavors and they need to not be weakened by associating flavors and you need to not use the same berry and you need to know how to cook properly and there's more things. So remember how every poffin has traits. The first thing that the game does is it creates a summary of all the berries used. For this example, I used Aleppa and Orin, Persim and Alum. I'm gonna mess up so many of these berries names, which all four of these berries are very like all around berries. So they're not really great to use and I don't recommend ever cooking. Them. So the sum of all the berries, 40, 30, 30, 30, and 30, that adds up. Now the weakening flavors, as I mentioned before, spicy is weakened by dry. So I took this 30 and I brought it down here. 30 down here, 30 down here, 30 down here, this 40 down here. Think of it as a giant carousel. And now we're gonna subtract the weakening flavors. So 40 minus 30 is 10, 0, 0, 0, and minus 10. Therefore, now this is a plus 10 spicy and minus 10 sour. Then you need to find out how many total negatives there are. Because we only have one negative here and this negative 10, we're gonna be subtracting all five of these numbers by one. So we have nine, minus one, minus one, minus one, and minus 11. Now is the cook time bonus. 
If you cook it in 60 seconds, that's an exactly 1.0 because it's gonna take your time divided by 60 and that's how fast it's going to be. So if you somehow magically cooked it in half of that time, it'd be two. Tell you what, for this example, I'll put down 50, right? Cause we're just starting off. So that's a bonus of 1.2. That gives us 10.8, a negative number, negative, negative, and negative. How many times did you spill or burn it? If you spill or burn it once, then it subtracts one from everything. So I'm just gonna assume you're never gonna spill or burn it. And now we come up with our final numbers. What it does is it takes all the negatives, it removes them. So we only have this, which is 10.8, and then it always rounds down. So this berry is 10 on spicy, zero, 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 zero. So that's going to be a spicy poffin level 10. The second metric that it calculates is the smoothness. Now the smoothness has its own thing going on. First, it finds the average of all the poffins you used. All four of these are 20, average of four 20s is 20. The number of poffins used is four. Then it subtracts the average by the number of poffins used. We're at 16, pretty self-explanatory. Now the third most important thing I want you to take away from this entire video is that the affection level of all of your Pokemon in Amity Park cooking with you provides a bonus to your cooking. I've tested this with one Pokemon with full affection, three Pokemon with full affection, six Pokemon full affection, and I've tried this with one Pokemon with no affection. I have i can't come up with an exact equal ratio is how much it could discount. I've seen it is give me as little of like a, like a quarter discount, and I've seen it give me as high as a half of a discount. So that 16 looks more like eight, which is fantastic. That means I could feed twice as many of this exact poppin to the same Pokemon before maxing out its sheen at 255. Got it? And I also have a theory, just a game theory, that the affection of all the Pokemon cooking with you also affects your cook time. I've done this with one Pokemon who kind of liked me and, and it's about 55 seconds with the same exact strategy. And then when I have six Pokemon who love me, I've gotten that down to below 40 seconds. 38 seconds is actually my fastest time ever. And I can't explain it anything else other than the Pokemon who are around me just make it cook faster and create less smoothness from it. So you always wanna have a high affection team in Romanus Park while doing this. When I say Romanus Park, I meant Amity Square. Amity Square, I've done too many legendary videos. Here's an image I found randomly on the internet of all the Pokemon you're allowed to have with you. Also, when you enter there and if you don't have any applicable Pokemon, they'll literally just tell you a list of all of them. I hate this website. Now, I wouldn't be spending so much time talking about the affection level and how much it affects things, except for the fact that the difference between having no Pokemon who love you and a full affection team is the difference between having a level 47 Poffin of smoothness 19 and having a level 70 Poffin with a smoothness of 10. That's actually two exact Poffins that I've made. So you literally get like a 1.4 times better Poffin and you can eat twice as many of them. That's amazing. I wish I, wish I could do that with Oreos because the serving size of Oreos is two Oreos and I love Oreos. Finally, time for part six, how to make the best Poffins in the game. Hopefully you didn't just skip to this. If you just skipped to this, rewind now. I'm going over very important things back there. Plus you missed the first two most important things to take away from the video, great. So now you know that every Pokemon has a max sheen of 255. Now you know that every Poffin can have its smoothness value reduced and its traits increased with high affection cute Pokemon in, in Amity Square. Knowing all of that, it is possible to max out one Pokemon's five different traits in as little as five cooks. And wait, wait for the best part, you do it with regular berries. That's right, you don't need the special ones. That's right, the crazy berries that have like a 7% chance to be chosen daily uh, aren't needed for this. You can do this with the rare berries dropped from the Gen 3 Romanus Park legendaries, but you don't need to. I, I did so much calculating on this. Hang on, hang on. I took every single berry in the entire game. I marked where they're located, if they're available in patches, if they're RNG gifts, if they're only available in Romanus Park. I then marked down all of the following Pokemon and the traits that are required for them to work, and the Amity Square ones as well. And then I was like, well, I don't want to do all this RNG stuff, and I don't want to make a guide that relies on RNG stuff. So I decided to delete everything that requires RNG, right? So I decided to delete everything that's going to require you to have the RNG gifts, oop, those are all gone, 
Everything that requires you to go to Romanus Park, those are gone. The Amity Square exclusives, those are gone. And that just leaves you with regular old berries, but specific berries. You notice that not a, not a lot of them are listed here, and that's because a lot of them are hot garbage. If you noticed, I gave everything a tier list. C, Bs, I, the C pluses from Romanus Park, A's are the ones from uh, the third gen legendaries. Well, some of them, some of them are really bad. And the grades are based on the most predominant trait to smoothness ratio. So what gives you the most bang for your buck? These four berries work very cohesively, Figgy, Leppa, Quelot, and Pinat berries, because factoring all the sums, the weakening flavors, no, ha notice how none of them are weakened, right? That's very important by this. Decreasing for negative flavors. If you get it down to 40 seconds, that's, that's the number time that you wanna hit. You wanna hit 40 seconds with no spills or burns. That gives you 63 as your predominant trait, and 10 as your secondary trait. Sweet is the secondary one. So this is 63 on spicy and 10 on sweet. After factoring in all the bonuses for smoothness for a full affection team, that smoothness may be as low as eight. So in this playthrough, I have six cuddly, adorable Pokemon that all wanna come with me here in Romanus Park. We're gonna take all six out. By the way, one of them is gonna follow you. You have to track down the other five. If you just run over to the bowl right now before tracking them down, they don't count towards the cook. Great, we found all of them. You don't even need to wait for all of them to run up to you. Just speak with the lady and let's go in here. If you're not confident with your ability to do this cook first try, then I definitely recommend saving outside of, like I said, start really fast. Okay, now we're gonna find our nice sweet spot. We're gonna wait for the audible cue to switch our direction. All the Pokemans around me are very happy. Yes, they are. Switch direction. See how I start there very fast? We're now on phase two with the yellow lights around the perimeter. Phase three. Let me wait for those to, yep, there we go. Now, now we Mario party this. I should be using the N64 Switch controller for this, just for that real, real messing up my palm nostalgic feel. All done. And what's the time on that? 40 seconds? 38.9, a level 65 mild Poffin. So because my time was below 40 seconds, my score of my Poffin went from my estimated calculation of 63 to 65. As Soon as you step down, you can actually access your Poffin thing. And yes, smoothness of eight. That was my switch that has all of my testing stuff on there. And on this switch, this is my main playthrough that I like to show you guys where I pick up none of the items along the way. Doing this entire thing, I used up 120 of 255 sheen. That created a 37% room for error. And the 37% room for error can be not s spinning it as fast as me, it could be spilling over, or most likely you don't have six Pokemon who are all adorable and can enter Amity Square with you. There's our last ones, perfect. As Jesse Pinkman would say, it's time to cook, Mr. White. As you're gonna see right here, I have very, very little berries. However, I do have the full list of all the berries I need for all of these cooks, and I wanted to just test it with just a random team, just whatever I had to be able to do this. All right, the Spicy's B tier berry, which is the most important, is the Figgy berry. From here, we're gonna be choosing the Leppa berry, Wallet berry, and the Pinap berry. And now we get to cooking. Start fast. Taper off, inverse, taper. Almost time to rush, almost time to rush. There we go. That was a 44 second cook and a level 56 Poffin. So going by my math, as long as you could cook level 53 Poffins with a smoothness of 12, this works. If you can't make level 53 Poffins with a smoothness of 12 with the four berries I told you, you have to get your affection level up. Just hatch some level one Pokemon, just bring them around, just throw experience share on them, make sure they're all happy. If you pick Pokemon that evolve via friendship, that's even a little bit more of a boost. If you have some extra berries that lower EVs that you're not using, go for it. For a dry cook, we're gonna be using a Wiki Berry, Pawn Dew Berry, Kelpsy Berry, and a Raz Berry. We're gonna follow the same exact procedure and go from there. In 41 seconds, we got level 61 Poffins. Nice. 
for the sweet poffins, we're gonna need one mago berry, one greppa berry, one block berry, and one persim berry. These are the four berries that you're going to need to do this. And let's just cook this bad boy up right quick. Exactly 40 seconds, level 61 poffin. Nice. For the bitter poffin, we're gonna be using one agave berry, one lum berry, one nanab berry, and one pomeg berry. Oh, had a spill there. 44 seconds, and sadly we got a spill on that one. But level six is still within the uh, the realm that we're gonna be okay. And lastly, for the sour one, we're going to use one iapa berry, one citrus berry, one wee pear berry, and one kelpsy berry. The palm of my hand is so not having fun today. 42 seconds, level 60 poffins. Nice. And that's all the cooking you need to do for one single Pokemon. He has been fed absolutely nothing, zero sheen, zero all traits. Likes dry food, doesn't matter. First things first, I'm gonna be feeding him the four spicy poffins. After the first one, you're gonna see the coolness go up and the cuteness go up just a little bit. That's on purpose. Now, depending on the affection level of your entire party and how pro of a gamer you are, upon eating your fourth poffin, coolness might be maxed out, but there's a very good chance that it's not. That's the reason I chose these berries that I did. Because, notice how that one had that little bit of cuteness to there? Well, these ones that we cooked, that is pre predominantly green and a little bit of red, these ones are gonna be giving us just that little bit extra that we need to top off our spicy treat. Cuteness is gonna go all the way up and coolness goes up just a little bit. And on the fourth one that he's gonna eat, we're gonna top off that spicy. There we go, coolness is now maxed out. So see now how cleverness is it fully filled up. That's right, this one that's primarily blue with a little bit of green, that's gonna to top that off. They all work together. It's a whole big Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Pentagon of coolness spicy traits. There we go, get that beauty level up. Make all those Feebas very jealousy, very jelly of you there, Mr. Infernape. And by the time we eat the fourth beauty poffin, cleverness is capped out as well. There we go, cuteness is fully maxed out. And now we just eat the last ones of the toughness. I think one of these traits, if you made sub level 60s for them, it might be a little lacking. Oh, he didn't like that one because he doesn't like those. That's fine. It disdainfully ate the poffin. So because Infernape's food trait, one of his uh, skills got boosted very quickly. And this toughness right here is not getting boosted as easily. So after we throw that last mile poffin in there, we should have enough room for two more poffins with this inefficiency that we're doing right now. Oh, we didn't even need it. But if we did, we could have just gone back and, you know, grabbed another one. As you can see, the sheen is not fully maxed out yet. We still have at least 12 more smoothness that's available. We might be able to cook one, maybe two more poffins. And like I said, if you had a full high uh, uh, affection team, that would be much lower. As I did here on this game, you see how my sheen is nowhere near full. This is if you have a full team of max affection Pokemon. That's at least four, four extra sheen that you have to be able to get your Garatina up this high or whatever Pokemon. But going back to this game right here, Infernape, even with not having a full affection team, as long as you can hit that 60, man, 60 is that magic number. If you get 60 12s, you're good. That's been your full guide on Poffin making, feeding Poffins to your Pokemon in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Hope my hours of research and figuring this all out was helpful for you guys. If it was, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, maybe even turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.